understanding what the clutch does and why we need it will help you use it. Now, for the benefit of your understanding, I'm gonna stall the car. To help you understand what's happening when I stall the car, you need to understand the difference between engine speed and wheel speed. This is your engine speed and it measures how fast your engine is spinning and this is your wheel speed, how fast your wheels are spinning. Your engine speed is measured in revolutions per minute or RPM, as you can see here, RPM or revs times 100. So that 10 actually means 1000 and this is 2000, 3000, etc. They don't put the zeros in because, well, it would look a mess. When I come off the gas pedal, the engine speed returns to its minimum, which is known as its idle. And on this car, it's around about 750 revolutions per minute. That's quite fast. The engine is spinning at more than 10 times a second at the moment. Some cars idle a little bit higher and some are a little bit lower. If I press the gas, I rev the engine up. And if I come off the gas, it will return to its minimum speed, its idle. And this is your wheel speed at zero miles per hour. If I press the gas pedal now, that increases the engine speed, but it doesn't increase the wheel speed because they're not currently connected. So that's your engine speed and that's your wheel speed. I'm now traveling at 38 miles per hour in fifth gear, and that equates to around about 1,500 RPM of revs. If I was to slow the car down with the brake, you'll see the engine speed comes down with the wheels. The brakes work on the wheels, but as the wheels are currently connected to the engine, that slows the engine down as well. And when the revs get to their minimum, which is around about 750 RPM, it doesn't want to go any slower. If I force it to go slower with the brake and bring the engine speed even lower, when the engine gets to around about 500 RPM, it really can't spin anymore and it just stalls because the engine can either be on and spinning quickly or it's off. There's no in between. Petrol and diesel engines have a high minimum speed. They can't spin slowly. Most need to spin at, at least 10 times a second. That's really fast. I don't think I could even do it if I tried. This electronic screwdriver represents your engine and this skateboard wheel represents the clutch or the wheels. The clutch and the wheels are directly connected for the purposes of this demonstration. I know there's a gearbox and diff in the middle there, but let's leave them out to keep it simple. So when the clutch is up, it's connected to the engine and whatever the engine does, the wheels do, and whatever the wheels do, the engine does. When you press the clutch down, you disconnect the engine from the wheels. This is important because it allows you to stop the wheels whilst the engine is spinning. If you couldn't push the clutch down and disconnect the engine from the wheels, well, every time you stopped, you'd stall the engine or you wouldn't stop and you'd keep going forever or until you run out of fuel. I'm now gonna stop the car without stalling. So I'm gonna start using the brake that slows the wheels down, but it also slows the engine speed down. When the engine gets near its minimum, which it is now, I'll press the clutch down to disconnect the engine from the wheels. That means I can stop the wheels without stopping the engine. So the wheels are at zero miles per hour and the engine is still running. If I was to come off the clutch now, the car would wanna try and move, but I'm in fourth gear and that's not the right gear to move. So it'll probably just stall. If I wanna come off the clutch without the car stalling or trying to move, I must first select neutral. So now there's no gear. So therefore, even if I come off the clutch, there won't be a connection between the engine and the wheels. As you can see, wheels are still at zero and engine is still running. So you need to disconnect the engine from the wheels so that you can stop the wheels without stopping the engine. And that's why you have a clutch, but you also need to use the clutch to reconnect the engine to the wheels when you wanna get going. If you lift the clutch to about halfway when you're in gear, that will start to reconnect the engine to the wheels. It's known as the clutch biting point, also known as half clutch. Usually it's about halfway up, but sometimes it can be slightly higher or slightly lower. It's worth noting that if you press the clutch up and down, and you're in neutral, that's gonna have no effect on the speed of the car. But you have to press the clutch down to select gear, so clutch down into first gear. I'm gonna take the parking brake off now, and when I lift the clutch to about halfway, the car's gonna start moving. Pay attention to the revs, the engine speed, and the wheel speed. I'm not gonna use gas on this occasion, so lifting the clutch up, 
about halfway there and the engine actually revved itself there to help me along and now the clutch has finished syncing up with the engine they're both the same speed now engine and clutch are the same speed i can come off the clutch and now i'm rolling and i can use the gas to carry on the reverse sensors are going off because the bushes really are sticking out here in some places and if i go anywhere near the bushes that sets the sensors off at this low speed i'm going to stop the car now so clutch down and brake this time i'm going to add gas before i lift the clutch because if i add gas the revs are going to be higher and when the revs are higher the engine is more powerful and that's useful when you're moving away if you notice before when i lift the clutch without adding gas it revved itself up anyway because it needed to and i don't want to rely on that system not all cars have that system some cars give you more help than others so this time i'm going to add gas first so there's some revs the engine's a lot stronger now and now i want to lift the clutch up to about halfway there's going to be more power available to push the wheels or spin the wheels should i say so no one coming clutch up to the bite point there we go it's moving away now the clutch and engine are fully synced and come fully off the clutch and now the gas is controlling the speed of the car. If you want to get better at finding the clutch bite point or knowing how long you need to hold the clutch at the bite point for to move away smoothly, then I have a video, I'll leave a link to it up there in the top right hand corner of your screen. You also need to press the clutch down to change gear because after the clutch but before the wheels is the gearbox. And if you try to change gear whilst there's power going through the gearbox, you may damage something. It is possible, but I highly recommend against it. So what I need to do, is when I get fast enough to change gear, is clutch down and off the gas. There's no power going through the gears now, so I can change into second gear from first, and lift the clutch up to reconnect the engine to the wheels, and now I can put power through the gears again to the wheels and accelerate without damaging anything in the gearbox. I'm going to do that again, but this time I'll add a little bit of power as I'm coming off the clutch to prevent myself from slowing down as much. So clutch down, off the power, there's no power going through the gears at the moment. I can switch to third gear, clutch to the bite point, a little bit of gas when I get there to stop me slowing down, and then fully off the clutch to continue. To summarise, pressing the clutch down disconnects the engine from the wheels. The reason why you want to do this is so that you can stop the wheels without stopping and therefore stalling the engine. Remember, the engine doesn't want to stop spinning and it wants to spin really fast. Also, the clutch allows you to reconnect that fast spinning engine to the wheel smoothly. If you hold the clutch at the bite point, about halfway up for a few seconds, the clutch will gradually catch up with the speed of the engine so you move away without a sudden jerk as you lift the clutch up. That will happen if you lift the clutch up too quickly. Also, pressing the clutch down disconnects the engine from the gearbox, allowing you to change gear without power going through the gears. So you can change gear without causing damage. Electric vehicles and many hybrids don't need a clutch because the electric motor is spinning the wheels and the electric motor can spin as slow as you want it to. So there's no reason to disconnect the motor from the wheels. If you want to do 0.1 miles per hour, the electric motor will happily spin that slowly. However, a petrol or diesel engine isn't that flexible. Many automatics do actually have a clutch. In fact, most these days have two. You don't have a clutch pedal, but the car's computer operates the clutch for you. Traditional automatics and some modern automatics have what's known as a torque converter. That's a different way of allowing the engine to continue spinning whilst you stop the wheels. You don't have to worry about pushing a pedal or pressing a button, it all happens automatically. Well, I hope this video helps you understand why we need a clutch in a petrol or diesel car. Well, in a manual petrol or diesel car at least anyway. If you think it does, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you're looking for car insurance, check out the links to Collingwood and Confused in the description. If you want to insure yourself on somebody else's car when you're learning to drive, Collingwood are there for you because you can insure yourself on somebody else's car without affecting the owner's policy. And that takes away a big stress from the owner of that car when you're using it to learn to drive. Via the link at the moment, there's up to 35% off and a 20 pound Amazon gift card. If you want to insure your own car, check out the link to confuse.com. You fill out one quote form and get loads of quotes back from different insurers so you can compare who's cheapest. And you can change your car on that quote as many times as you like 
which is a really handy way of figuring out how much it costs to insure different cars. If you're shopping around for cars and you wanna know how much it costs to insure, do one quote, change the car with the reg number as many times as you like, or the make and model to see how much it costs. Using the links doesn't cost you anything, but it does support the channel, so thank you very much. Subscribe to get my future videos, and until the next one, cheerio.